Right, hello everyone. Um, a lot of you have asked to know how to make uh, a Raspberry Pi powered remote control car. Um, it's fairly simple, um, and I'll explain the hardware later on when we take it outside for a spin, but I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of the software and what you need to know to make it. I'm not going to show you how to do it and give you software examples because most of the fun in doing this isn't driving it around and playing with it, it's actually finding out how do I make this work. So go on Google, research what you're doing. If you get really stuck, I could probably help you out, but it's simple. I mean, I'm not a good programmer and I knocked all this together in about four, five, six hours and most of that was finding out the right thing to do rather than making it happen. I could probably write it again in about an hour and it would probably be better. So, uh, right. What have we got? Okay, well, you're going to need a car, a toy car. Um, this is an old one, probably 10, 15 years old. Just found it in the garage laying around. The cheaper the better, probably, because it's going to get hit. It's going to smash into things. Um, there's a few videos at the end where you'll see it falling to bits. <laughs> well, actually, no, not falling to bits even, just hitting things really hard. So a decent front bumper is good, um, something with a bit of suspension. So if you get travel in the wheels, that's good because it means you can drive it off-road a little bit and when you do take it off grass and up and down slopes, then it's, it's quite good. Um, most toy cars are about a foot long. They're going to have enough platform space on top to put your electronics. Um, so not really a problem there. Oh, you don't even need... I put half a, an extruded case. Sorry, let me just cancel this. <laughs> um, I put an extruded, um, one of my friends has a uh, 3D printing setup, so he's printed me off a bit of a, um, a case to sit the pie in, but it's not necessary. Um, I only did it because, you know, we wanted to have a play with his, with his machine. Um, so I've got an electronic speed controller on the car, um, and like a, a that, that just runs the motor. Right, sorry about that. My mum called me <laughs> halfway through. Still happens, doesn't matter what age you are. Um, right, and it was a FaceTime call on the phone that's actually providing the wireless connection, so it's actually important to know about this. The phone is creating a wireless network. Um, most smartphones can do it. Um, and then the Raspberry Pi is logging on to the phone um, rather than the other way around. It just seemed an easier way to do it. Uh, right. Okay, so where was I? Um, software. Okay, um, I'm running the Raspberry Pi using a 5 volt, um, like a top-up power supply for a mobile phone. It's, uh, I think it's 6,000 milliamps, so it's quite a big supply. And it'll run the Raspberry Pi for about, uh, about 6, 7 hours, something like that. Um, and it's great, it's got a battery indicator on the back, you probably can't see it because of the light. But um, it charges up in a few hours and it'll run it for ages. And that's running the Pi and the, the camera, um, the camera board. And uh, and then initially I had the Pi powered off the speed controller because it can feed power back through the uh, the GPIO ports, um, but I found when the motor drew too much power it would um, cause it to restart and do unusual things. So cut that off, own power supply, and then the car has its own power supply, and then it's perfectly stable. And then when the car goes flat, the Pi keeps on running, so that works really well. Software-wise, I initially wrote this using. Um, uh, Apache. So I wanted the whole project to be dead simple. So the car starts up, you log onto it with your phone, and you access it through a web browser. You can't get simpler than that. There's no software to install, um, easy to distribute, just makes a lot of sense to do it that way. I prefer to work that way if I can. So uh, I really initially wrote it in Apache with, um, you can, I, I was using some custom CGI scripts, but you could write it in PHP. A uh, very simple web page, um, and it uses mo most mobile devices now have an on device rotation um, event that fires every time the device moves. So you can capture that in JavaScript, and then you can just alert those figures out to the screen or to an alert box. Or in this case, I used um, an AJAX request to send the information back to the web server. So I had a little PHP or CGI script sat on the Raspberry Pi receiving the signals and then basically cutting them out directly to the serial port and that controls the servos. So it's a really simple project and that's sort of why I did it because I don't have a 
a great amount of time, so I just wanted to do something with my Raspberry Pi. Um, okay, so that was great. Uh, you might have seen my last video, it was about two or three refreshes a second, so you'd move the phone or the device, and as you rotated it, the wheels would kind of stutter round. Um, two or three, maybe four refreshes a second. And I wanted to speed that up. And I also wanted to learn about a new web server called um, Node, Node.js. So it's a full JavaScript web server and it runs a single session rather than every time the request comes in, starting up a new thread and session uh, and taking up a lot of resources. It's based on Google's V8 JavaScript engine uh, and it basically pre-compiles your JavaScript, executes it and runs. Um, and the good news is it didn't take very much to learn and it was about eight, nine, maybe ten refreshes a second, which is more than enough for a car like this. And as you'll see in a minute, it makes it really smooth. Um, so I'd say it's about a four times increase in speed over a running Apache. So that's a bit of a no-brainer. Just takes a little bit of learning, and then all of a sudden you've got a much better solution. Um, so software-wise, uh, to make the camera work, you can see it's recording right now. Um, obviously, the Raspberry Pi is not massively powerful, but if you're efficient with what you do, it's, it's, it's not too bad. I wanted to have a POV system so I could see on the smartphone what was being seen on the front of the car. So effectively, you can drive it sat down in your living room. This can drive around outside, and you can still see where it's going. Um, I tried a few different video streaming methods. Not many of them work to the browser on an iOS or Android phone, um, or any, any device really. So I ended up going with Motion JPEG, which doesn't seem like a very good idea until you realize that JPEG compression is done inside the chip on the camera. Um, that's dropped into a temporary directory on the Raspberry Pi. I used FSHM because it's in memory rather than slash temp. Uh, so there's no writing to the SD card. And then a custom, and you'll be able to find all the stuff easily on Google. Uh, uh, somebody's written a, a Motion JPEG server, which runs on a different port. I think I'm using port 8081 in this case. Um, and then you just refer to that image in your basic HTML page, and it refreshes on its own. No magic. Um, and it does work really well. Um, so here's the car looking at my laptop. And if I uh, sorry, ignore the, uh, the wheels moving. If I show you this, ah, no, it in. sorry, not a very good example. Um, I don't really want de ignore the noise. But try and look at what it's doing. Okay. Sorry for all the distraction, we'll get to that in a minute, but um, effectively what it means is only 5 or 10% of the Raspberry Pi CPU is being used to process the image stream and send it out over Wi-Fi. Um, and then the rest of the process isn't available for controlling the car, which is what's most important. So, um, that's about it really. I've got a very simple um, wireless dongle up here. Um, it's the TP-Link uh, device, you know, it's 10 quid's worth in most computer shops. Um, the car was an old car, but probably worth about 50 quid. Raspberry Pi, 30 quid. Um, so, you know, you're talking putting a whole project together for less than £100, probably about $150, less than that really. Um, a mobile phone, which you've probably got already anyway, in either an Android or an iOS device. Um, you could use a, any, any, any old Android device, would be fine. You could even use an iPad, I suppose. Um, might be an even better experience. But yeah, that's simple really. Uh, not a lot to it. And it works really well. So I think that's enough for you to know. Oh, yeah, well, here's the only other thing worth mentioning. I'm using a little add on daughter board uh, on top of the Raspberry Pi to do um, to basically talking to the, the two servo, or the front, the steering servo, and to the speed controller. Um, now, apparently, this isn't necessary anymore. You can talk over GPIO directly to servos. Um, Initially, I thought that wasn't possible because there's no high precision timing device, but apparently it is possible. I haven't had a go yet, and if I tutorialize this for, for everyone, I'll probably try and run that without the daughter board. Um, but I'll put a link to the daughter board in one of the videos anyway, um, and you'll be able to see how that works. So, yeah, that's it. Now, let's see how it works.
very easy to film, but I want to show you the quality of the picture on the phone from what the car's seeing. It's pretty good. Uh, if you can see that, anyway. Moving it around, I've got to try and keep it still, I think. Ho, ho, ho. 